Now welcome uh, class. Welcome class. This is a human resource management professional examination board HRM PEB. And uh, the paper is Certified Human Resource Professional Examinations, commonly referred to as CHRP. So these are the CHRP exams examined by the HRM PEB, Human Resource Management Professional Examination Board. It prepares one to be a human resource professional. Uh, so this is... Um, CHRP03, the paper is Accounting and Financial Management, and it is Part 1, Section 1, Paper. We have six sections. This is Part 1, Section 1, Paper, Accounting and Financial Management, CHRP03. So we will go through the entire question, and this was done in November 2022. November 2022, that is our uh, last year. Okay, so uh, the first question is... Uh, a passage here so we'll go through the question Tunza national insurance fund was established through an act of parliament its mandate is to provide health care services to the citizens of ufamia country through registration of members collection of contributions and payment of claims such claims are for services rendered to members in all accredited health care facilities across the country the mandate of TNF includes provision of health care financing to its members and their dependents who contribute as employees or self-employed members. Membership is open to all citizens aged 18 years and above. The contributions have been quite little to meet the needs of the claimants and operational expenditure of TNIF. The country has faced a shrinking economy high rate of unemployment, social evils that negatively affect the health of the youth, increased lifestyle diseases, and high dependency. This has affected the fund negatively. In January 2020, TNF, TNHIF, uh, contracted the services of a financial and human resource expert, Mr. Simba, to oversee the restructuring program. The initial stages were challenging due to lack of funds. However, in late 2021, the impact of the turnaround began to be felt. The Auditor General's report for the financial year ending 30th June 2021 showed that, despite an increase in the cash flow, some issues were, st were, were still outstanding. For instance, statement of comprehensive income revealed that out of an expenditure of that $7.7 billion, about $7 billion was fictitious. A review of the payroll for the 12 months revealed an expenditure of 38.5 billion paid as net salaries. This was below one third of the employee's basic salary, which was a breach of the fund's policy. So to address the challenge, Mr. Simba introduced a re-engineering strategies that turned around the fund. The fund expanded health care benefits packages to its members through a super cover that integrated in patient and outpatient services, imaging services, substance and rehabilitation services, emergency contribution was increased from 135 to uh, between 300 and 1,500 1, based on the individual space scale, contributions for informal sector employees remained unchanged. The scheme attracted a large membership due to the enhanced benefits. In January 2022, TNIF had doubled its cash surplus enabling it to pay out medical claims. The unaudited results for the period revealed that the scheme had 800 million in surplus, representing 78% jump from the previous 449 million. The health funds premium grew from 29% to 80%, while medical payouts jumped by 31%, representing a total sum of 71 billion. Other costs increased by 9 billion. The financial year ending 30 June 2022, the payout had marginally increased to 78% by June 2022. However, the period was marked by massive increase in the cost of healthcare inputs due to currency fluctuations. The cost of medical drugs and procedures had been on the increase in the wake of local currency decline against the dollar. The cash surplus has strengthened TNIF 
uh, financial status at its set, as it sets to roll out the universal health care coverage. This is in line with the new regulations where the government has made membership to the scheme compulsory. The change has compelled all citizens above 18 years, both in the formal and informal sectors, to register and make monthly contributions of Kenya shillings, 500. So, question one. Explain five factors that may have contributed to the favorable cash flow of the fund. Explain five factors that may have contributed to the favorable cash flow of the fund. Favorable cash flow of the fund. Five factors that may have contributed to the favorable cash flow of the fund. I think the favorable cash flow of the fund started somewhere here. I think most of those answers we can get from this. Let me just open uh, somewhere where I can write. <clears throat> Explain five factors that may have contributed the favorable cash flow of the fund. So these answers, I think, do we have favorable cash flow of the fund? The answer is yes, from the passage. So we'll go to the passage and see if we can get the answers from there. Normally, passage questions get the answers from the passage. And it's only when you are required to think outside the application, that's when you can bring in your. But otherwise, the first option is the passage itself. I think the answer should be found here. In late 2021, the impact of the turnaround began to be felt. The auditor's report for the financial ending that it showed that despite the increase in cash flow, some issues were still outstanding. For instance, no. To address the challenge, Mr. Simba introduced yeah, that turned around the fund. Yeah, I think the answer should be found here. So let's read the question again and come back to the answers. Explain five factors that may have contributed to the favorable cash flow of the fund. Favorable cash flow of the fund. I think the answers are here. Number one, we can talk of the expanded healthcare benefit packages to its members. I think this should make one of the answers. Expanded healthcare benefits packages to its members. That possibly will have um, increased the number of people in the fund and of course the increase in number of people in the fund will mean so expanded healthcare benefits we can have that as one of the points expanded healthcare benefits healthcare benefits one of the reasons then let's look for the other one just go back there Substance, rehabilitation, emergency. These are the expanded services. Uh -huh. Then to marry the services, formal, formal sector employees' monthly contribution was increased from one third five two. So an increase in formal contribution, formal employees' contribution, increase in formal employee contribution, formal employees' contribution, that definitely will lead to a favorable cash flow. And let's look at the another another point if we can get from here. Contribution for informal sector remained unchanged. So since the contribution for informal sector remained unchanged, it means that one will not, is not a factor to that created because it remained unchanged after all. The scheme attracted a large membership due to the enhanced benefits, yeah? So we can talk of the enhanced benefits. Enhanced benefits. Enhanced benefits. I think there is a difference. Here we can talk of expanded healthcare benefits or the scope. Because they were talking about even rehabilitating and, you know, uh, even international uh, medical, seeking international med So I think the first one, let's talk of expanded healthcare scope. And then increase in formal employee contribution from one thousand five hundred or three or one thousand five hundred, then enhanced benefits. That's also another point that we are getting from uh, that particular point. 
and then uh, let's see if we can get any other points. We are done with that paragraph. See if we can get any other point. I think this one also will come in as one of the points. This is in line with the new regulations. Where? So, the passage of the new regulations. New regulations. Where the government has made membership to the scheme called compulsory. So, membership is compulsory. Membership is compulsory. And thus, it compelled all citizens above 18 years, both in formal and informal sector, to register and make monthly contribution. I think that is very important. Membership compulsory. And then it was also uh, mandatory now for all members to make monthly contributions monthly contributions i think that those could be some of the points that led to the favorable cash flow that everybody was now supposed to be a member so long as you are 18 years and above and then uh, contribution was compulsory if you are informal 500 if you are not uh, informal they talked about almost 1500 what we uh, discussed the other uh, and so I think we can talk of uh, com compelled, they were compelled to do what? To do the monthly contribution. This will definitely increase the cash flows. So expanded healthcare scope, increase in formal employee contribution, enhanced benefits of the scheme, new regulation where membership was compulsory, so long as you are above 18 years, and monthly contributions which were compelled by all members. So I think this should be able to give you the 10 marks. Let's look at uh, B. And you can see we've just gotten the points from the question. In the context of uh, the case study, assess the suitability of financial ratio analysis as a method of an analyzing financial statements. Suitability of financial ratio analysis as a method of analyzing financial statements. Now, ratios have been, I think they have been used here extensively. They are here. 78 percent jump from the previous 449 million premium grew from 29 percent to 80 percent payouts jumped by 31 percent uh, 9 billion in finance the payout had marginally increased to 78 percent so they have been used uh, extensively 78 percent yeah so you can see how ratios have been used. Now, ratios generally are used for uh, for planning purposes. For planning purposes, or for casting, or predicting. Ratios are also used to make decisions, decisions on how to move forward. So for decision making on way forward. Ratios have also been used to help us carry out the control function. We know how performance is going on, so we can easily con uh, carry out control function. Uh, ratios have also been used over time to check on the liquidity state of the organization, to check on the performance level of the organization, to report on the performance levels. It has also been used for comparison. Uh, purposes to compare this financial year to the previous financial year or the financial performance of this uh, industry compared to the other industry. It has also been used to track changes, to track changes over time. Ratios have also been used to track changes over time. And uh, generally to analyze the, analyze the financial statements have been used to analyze the financial statements and I can also say to give the you know uh, very wonderful insights financial valuable insights can also be used to provide valuable insights 
valuable insights. Now, this is not what the question is asking. This is not what the question is adding. This is the application part. You know, this is what you already know, what you have. But now you have to see how it applies in this question. Once you have these points, these are the uses of financial resource. So let's see how this, because the question is very clear. In the context of the case study, please go back to the case study. This is what you know, but go back to the, to the case study. So in the context of the case study, assess the suitability of financial risk as a method of analyzing financial statements. So let's go back, and this is where our ratios are here. You can see the unaudited results for the period revealed that the scheme had 800 million in surplus, representing 78% jump from the previous 449. So you can see ratios are used to show the performance. So how has the performance been? Performance. Then cite this line here. Then ratios have also been used for comparison. We are comparing the performance of this year to the performance of the previous year. Are you there? Ratios have also been used to set the trend, set the trend to plan. So if we have improved by 78%, the next financial year, how by how much percentage should we improve? Are you seeing now the application of the ratios in the context? So can you, and I'm just using this one particular line. But you can see, it has used to show the performance. Have we improved? Have we failed? It has been used to compare the, this, year, this year and last year. It has been used to set the trend. If this year we perform this way, how should we perform next year? So this is planning. So planning, comparison, performance, all of them have come from here. Uh, and you can see, 800 million in surplus. It, this also shows in terms of the profitability. Though now this is, a, of course, the NA is a, not a profitable venture, so, but you can see it has been used to show how generally the farm is faring on. Okay, the health fund premium grew from 29% to 80%, while medical payouts jumped from 31%, representing a total sum of 71 billion. Other costs increased by 9 billion in the financial year ending this. The payout had marginally increased to 78%. You see the payout by June. Now look at that. Look at that. The payout has increased. You see. So it can be uh, a tool for further decision making. The payout has increased. We can also get to know the cost effect kind of a relationship between this. That when this, the ratio of one item increases, then the other one is also likely to increase. So ratios can also be used to show the cost-effect relationship. An increase in this will lead to an increase in this. A decrease in this will lead to a decrease in this. I think you are getting the point that I'm trying to bring out. Suitability of financial ratios analysis as a method of analyzing. It's suitable in all this. It gives us all these functions. But then, can you explain these functions based on the passage that you've just read? Get the supporting information from the passage. So planning, we've seen. Decision, we've used. Control, it is there. We, especially when we talk about the this one, this point here, control. The payout ratio had marginally increased to 78%. So by June. So if we don't want that to increase by that extent, what are the control measures that we can put in place? And I think all these things we have now, may, you can get the explanation from that passage. Let's now go to the third item. Identify the financial challenges. Identify the financial challenges that the fund is likely to face once the government implements the mandatory membership. The financial challenges that the fund is likely to face once the government implements the mandatory membership wow of course once the government implements the mandatory membership uh, we will have uh, we've talked of uh, now we'll have so many members who will have been forced into the system 
And uh, when we have so many members in the system, of course, uh, we'll have... Uh, the first challenge will be to net all. So we can talk of the systems, systems that will support all this increased number of persons, increased persons. That will be a challenge. It might need, uh, you know, adopting another uh, system. Now, this one, I think it will be more of application because we've been told at the very end that the government actually uh, enforced this. But it has the question is not very clear on um, the passage is not very clear on the challenges that will be suffered uh, on mandatory registration. So we might want to do application. So systems definitely will have because of the numbers. Uh, systems possibly will have to be upgraded. That will come in as a challenge that will affect financial uh, part of it. Uh, yeah, collection of uh, contributions and payment of claims. Of course, this will also be a challenge. There will be so many claims, so many claims, and so many. Uh, a lot of uh, contributions. The contribution will increase because of the increased scope. That will come in as a challenge. A challenge is uh, will not be at the same level well as in the previous uh, regime. So there will be increased levels of collection. It's, it will be a challenge. It will require us to upgrade our game. There will be increased payments of claims. That will be also be a challenge. There will be increased number of members. That will pose a financial challenge. Possibly now the systems will come in here. Uh, yeah, I think those will come in as challenges. Let's see if we can have any other. Possibly, we will have opened another Pandora box here, another box for for increased frauds, because now the system is expanded. So there are high chances, you know. For instance, statement of comprehensive income revealed that out of expenditure of that seven, about seven billion was fictitious. So it means now that we've expanded, you know, with this small budget, we had a fictitious by, uh, payments of seven billion. So if we expand the budget, there are high chances that we will also expand the, 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 the fraudulent rates. So that can also come in as a challenge. And I think that is the fourth challenge now that we are mentioning. So the possibility of in, in, increased, uh, what? increased uh, losses through fraudulent acts uh, as a result of the numbers. When numbers increase, no. The governance issues also come into place as one of the challenges. Maybe there could be something on salaries, but let's leave that one out. Uh huh. Let's look for another challenge. Liquidity challenges, possibly, but I expect now the payments to come in. So even if the, the expenditures are high, we also expect the monies to come in. But yes, we can still say that the expenditures, there will be increased expenditures as a challenge. Increased expenditure as a challenge. Expenditure as a challenge. So yes, we have uh, increased cash inflows also, but we'll also have increased cash outflows as a challenge. So as a challenge, because now monies will be going out, we'll be churning out monies in excess of what we used to churn out. And in case we, at any given point in time, we are not stable enough, then we might end up losing a lot of cash. So that can also be a challenge that really needs to be factored in. And I think those make up the five. The, it has been quite a struggle. But I think that should make it the five challenges. I think I must have mentioned the five. 
increased expenditure, increased possibility of uh, additional losses as a result of fraud, then uh, increased uh, yeah, in collection of contribution. We, are, we have to upgrade the system. Payment of claims will also increase. Uh, registration of members. There are so many members now to be... No, such like those will form the challenges of... But make sure that they are related to the financial aspect because that's what the question is asking. Identify not just challenges but the financial challenges. Okay, let's look at the last one. Advise the government on the steps it should take to ensure successful implementation of the new scheme. Advise the government. These questions are, look very tough. Advice. Sorry, I just missed that question. Okay, we can work with that. Let me just work with that. So advise the government on the steps it should take to ensure successful implementation of the new scheme. I think number one, enforcement. Enforcement, very important. Enforcement, because they are now forcing members to come in that scheme. So unless it is enforced, they might not get the results. So enforcement. And then we talk of also involvement and participation. Participation. Actually, the whole thing is about ownership. These people should own the scheme. When they own the scheme, they will be able to pay without being uh, pushed around. So that will uh, really go a long way in uh, successful implementation. People should own uh, the fund, and that will allow them to pay without a lot of difficulties. Education and awareness, definitely that should be, we should create a lot of awareness so that people embrace, people know the benefits that are in the NHIF. Uh, in that, that you whatever HIF the fund no unless they know the benefit they might not be willing to pay so let them know the benefits let them know why that its existence in the first place and where they really need to join it then uh, we can also talk of uh, governance governance it should improve so that we don't have as uh, cases of fraud no they have mentioned they are fictitious. You can imagine 7 billion being fictitious payments. That's quite a lot of money. So governance should also be enhanced uh, for, you know, uh, for, for accountability purposes. Then, of course, the processes and the systems should be improved. Processes and systems should be improved uh, so that we can make it as user-friendly as possible for people to know how to go, uh, uh, you know, to remit their, 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 their contribution premium to the fund without uh, necessarily a lot of inconvenience. There should be a very convenient way of collecting this money from the people uh, that is also transparent and that can be easily traceable. That is very important. So we need to improve on the process and systems to make that collection process as efficient and as lean as possible. Then, uh, of course, the services service we need uh, quality service delivery Servi quality service delivery that will be very important so if of course people don't get what you have promised to give them in terms of quality services and uh, the benefits then they will uh, even if you enforce they are likely to develop some cold feet in when it comes to contribution. So unless they get value for their money, they will uh, likely uh, not uh, contribute willingly, and that can go a long way in uh, you know, uh, ensuring we don't have a successful uh, implementation. So I think this, you can pick any five points from this, and you should be able to get your 10 marks. Thank you. Let's meet in the next uh, question.